Y'all, we are here again back in the land of hospitality. We are in Pakistan. Now, I'm not gonna do it alone. You know, we got the one and only Balochi Gora, AKA Chris, but nobody calls him that here. Balochi Gora with the Shining Wala. Shining Wala is in the house. Now, today we're headed to Liaquat Abad. Now, this area used to be a fertile ground agri agricultural area until it once was uh, named after the first prime minister in Pakistan. We're gonna go out here. We're gonna eat biryani, Cindy biryani, with actual bone marrow. Go to Gope, we're gonna actually do a lot of things. We're gonna have fish that's fried and then cooked in a unique way. And of course, you cannot come to Pakistan without the chai. Hope you're excited. We got a lot coming from this first one and a lot more from the whole series. It's Max, let's go ahead and get it started. All right, we're gonna start off at a place that's known for doing a bone marrow biryani. It's actually gonna be a Cindy biryani as well, so it's gonna be full of spice and tanginess. We actually got to see it prepped, so I'm gonna take you to the kitchen real quick and we'll bring you back after they get set up and we get to eating. We're actually down here in the kitchen. It's just a few blocks off of the actual restaurant. We're gonna get in here and see how they prep their famous biryani. Nali? Nali, Nali. Nali. Yeah. So they got the ready one right here. He's just checking the rice and then pulling out what is the Nali. What they're using the word for the bread. So they got two types here. They actually got their Cindy Biryani, which they stew the korma right here. So you can see that rich red, it's spicy. You can see the dried prunes that they used in there. And then they got their pulao right here. But the main thing about this restaurant is they use the neli, which is gonna be that bone that's gonna have all that bone marrow infused in it. Long. Kari Mirche. Elaichi. So there are many, many, many types of biryani out there in the world, and Cindy biryani is very, you know, famous for it's not only its spices, that vibrant red, that heat it brings, but they're going to actually use a dried plum in it as well. He's very, very proud of the spices he used. I come from a market, uh, Joria Market, I think is what it's called. We'll have to put some writing because I can't think of the pronunciation. They're showing you the process of cutting right now, and he's shown us the cross section of each one of these, and it's been like two inches thick on each one full of bone marrow. Power! Power! <laughs> That is crazy. Not only is that one portion, he weighs it for you, and he's like, here's a little extra for you. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I am Jansip from Kadri Nali Biryani. And you can understand that this Nali Biryani is about 6-7 years ago. It started and it was a highlight. I'm 
I haven't even taken one bite of my biryani. He's got the sweets out here already. <laughs> There, there's so much bone marrow coming out of this one. Look at that. Oh, it's still coming. <laughs> this is a big size. Very big, yeah. Wow. Big size, yeah. <laughs> uh, big size. Pakistani size. size. Pakistani size. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the serving size right here, guys. I mean, whew. Let's get some of that bone marrow, get all the spices. So this is, like I said, the Cindy biryani. Look at it, the vibrancy, the red. You got the, also got to have the potato in here somewhere. Get some of that biryani mixed in there. Man, that aroma is just insane. Makes you incredibly hungry. I can feel my stomach growling. Oh. How's the bone marrow? <laughs> it's unreal. So that pretty much takes those spices, and that bone marrow will, will coat your mouth. The spices don't go anywhere, so it just sits there. It lingers. It's got a red chili heat to it. It got a little bit of a tingle, but really, the the plum, the dried plum, the tartness, the little sweetness kind of comes through at the end. Ooh, the masala. Oh, look at that masala. Little chunks of masala is my favorite. That's probably the best video on it, but that's, damn, that's good. So Chris put the raita over, which is kind of like a, a yogurt, and you're gonna spice it like mint, they can put cumin, a little spices in it. I gotta get some of that on my bite. Oh, yeah. The heat builds, the more you eat this, that red chili heat builds, but you still get the other spices that he showed us, the cardamom, the clove, you get the actual bay leaf as well. And then, I'll tell you what, I cannot tell you how clutch those plums are. That tartness, that sweetness. This Bye, is Karina Liplo. It's out of the world. It's delicious food in the Pakistan. Chunks of ghost? Yes. Okay, so we got ch chunks of the mutton in here. And just look at all the bone marrow. Look at the spices. The cardamom just popping open here. Oh wow. Lots of meat. Bold gosh. Look at all that ghost in here. I got big old black peppercorn in here. That stalk is rich. Where I like this for its spiciness, its tartness, all the flavors that tantalize you. This is just rich, nutty. It's a very beefy, rich stock. The way you get that fat from that mutton, a little bit of a sticky fat, so it really coats your lips and everything you're eating, those spices just linger longer. You're gonna know you're gonna eat some spices in this meal. Look at that meat, look how much. I know. So much. It's just a mixture of the spices plus the fresh ingredients. You can see the mint right here that's shriveled up. Get you a big old green chili in there with it. It's not just a bone marrow. It's not like a trick to get you to come in here. It's just a God-given sauce to spread all over this. It's Chris said. But then you get the raita, it's homemade. You get to see all the fresh, high-quality ingredients. You can see them in your biryani, and you can taste them as well. And that spice will build. You're gonna see me, I'm gonna look like a puddle after this. Oh, it's like the lottery. That green chili was on fire. So before we finish all this biryani, which we're going to, we don't get too full, we gotta try their sweet. So we had two types of rice. This is the rice they use for a sweet dish. I'm gonna guess they're just cooking it down. I don't know if they're adding syrup or what. But you see, you actually got Pakistan's national dessert, the gulab jamun. You got some dried little fruit products. And then you got a koya, which I'm not exactly, I couldn't define it, but I know they use it to make konfi. And I'm sure it's just like cooked down milk protein and sweetened. Damn. 
that the koya has a lot of like some sort of spice flavor. I don't know what it is. It reminds me a lot of kia. What's that spice in the cardamom? Got another sweet cheek here. Now, of course, do the kier. Look at that. Cook up the rice. I know there's gonna be like a lot of cardamom in here, topping up pistachio and milk. We'll get a close up on that. I really like the texture on this. I feel like because it's got that little runny consistency, it's just gonna be even fresher than the other ones I've had. Ooh. That kier. Is a fire extinguisher. Yo, my mouth was hurting. It was burning. But now I got them endorphins running, coming down from that heat. Mm. Mm. With them rice granules in there, and that cooked down milk, it's caramelized a little bit, that sweetness, touch of bitter. Kadri Nali Biryani Zindabad. Such a humble man for owning a business that's so successful and loved, but you know, sitting there and telling me we're brothers and giving me a hug, and I thought the meal was a hug enough, but man, it just it's always that one step further. So I decided when I come to Pakistan, I'm not taking any more free meals. Well, you can't convince them, right? You can't pay. You can't pay. So what we're doing is I'm still getting the prices, everything. We're gonna keep a tally. So I had three biryani. I ate one, a pulao, I'm gonna say they're the same price, and they got us one to go. So I'm gonna donate the equivalent of that, plus whatever else we get for free today, at the end of the video. Or sometime. I mean, and this is a chaotic spot. We're by a bridge, there's lots of traffic, there's there's bikes and little rickshaws passing by, there's a market, there's a fish market right here, but still, him banging for that fish just draws you in, you can hear it echoing. So we're gonna come here for a special fish dish. So what they actually do is they're gonna fry their fish and they're gonna get it here on this huge flat griddle. I don't know if it actually is a tawa or not, but I'm gonna call it a tawa. You get it on there, you're gonna mix it with some ingredients and it's called kataka. Kataka. Chris. Kataka. Kataka. Okay, I called to call a friend for help how to pronounce that. But they're actually gonna be the sound of how they chop it up. He threw in that masala mixture and it got caught in my throat. Taking that fish, moving it over, we got the onions, we got the cilantro. They've got like a, a watered down cilantro, green chili, looks a little bit acidic. I think there's some mint in there as well. And then he's got powdered cumin right down here. This is like tiny little sitting area. You kind of feel like you're coming and getting a lunch with the bros. Yeah, everybody just kind of scoots in here. Yeah, you kind of just squeeze in tight. It is lunchtime right now. Oh yeah, look at that roti chapati right here. Oh. Look at this bite right here. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. I was not ready for that. That's good. So that batter's not as crunchy as you would think, but it's actually holding on to that flavor. Using a saltwater fish, very, not flaking in chunks all, it's just kind of like shredding off subtle, sweet, but it's about everything else they throw in there. Their chapati is really good too. This is really underrated. Their 
roti chapati is so soft and fresh and like not chewy. Chris been hitting all kinds of points today. We reach for that fast. Onion is cooked down, the chili is cooked down, it's coriander. It tastes like there's a lot of cumin in there. And then something like a mint coming through. Honestly, it's that green sauce on the side for me. It looks like it's gonna be all green chilies and hot, but it's dispersed just right. It builds a little bit, but there's just a, a plethora of flavor coming from more coriander, a little bit of mint chopped in up in there. Kind of like a little bit of like acidic water. Let me another try. I actually did not take any. Oh, it's actually really not that bad. Oh, yeah. We made friends of news. Now he's calling his friends. We're all having a big conversation. Hello? You take random phone calls in Pakistan when you're filming. <laughs> How'd that go, Chris? Can't pay. Okay, you cannot miss Golgape here in Pakistan. It's like a Pakistan's version of a Pani Puri, and you're not going to get anywhere more famous than this spot right here. Having been here 45 years, it's located right here. At night, it open up. You can get under the bridge. It's just like the hot spot to come get together and have a little snack and hang out with family and friends. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Hello. I am Mohammad Tariq from famous Golgape of Liaktabad. Honor. Uh, this tastes a unique taste. Uh, my father is starting the, the uh, product uh, in 15 years old. This is very tasty. The spicy water. Spicy water. Yeah. Yogurt and uh, sauce. Uh, sweet sauce. Funny. Sweet sauce is very tasty. Uh, unique taste. Making every day. Yes. Every day fresh. Yes, yes. Every okay. day fresh. Yeah, hundred percent. From cow. Yes, yes. Okay. So they're going to take these little tiny puri right here, they're going to crunch to it, put it in the chickpea. They have a sweet chutney, which is going to be a tamarind chutney. They're going to hit it with that 100% pure yogurt. And then they actually put their spicy water on the side. I don't know what to say now. Now we just got to wait for some gold guppy. Gold guppy. Gold wait for the gold guppy. <laughs> Uh, Urdu is easy. Yeah, eggplate. <laughs> eggplate DJ. Eggplate DJ. I don't know why Chris acts like Urdu so hard. <laughs> so easy. Eggplate DJ. Oh man, so actually watching them make it, it's really, really fascinating because it's so simple. You know, it's the yogurt, it's the sweet chutney, it's the spicy water. It's really in the chickpeas, in the actual little puri. But he takes so much time and effort to build flavor on each little layer, like the real yogurt his special sweet chutney and the spicy water that people can't get enough of, they have to drink it. Sweet? Okay. Sweet and uh, salt. Uh, sweet salt? Yes. See, five pieces sweet, okay. five pieces salt. Oh, right. Very salt. Okay. Yes. Hey. You think that? Oh, sugar, yeah, that. All right, I got to start with the sweet because that's what everybody highlights, that yogurt, that sweet chutney with the tamarind. Oh, look at that. Just scoop it up, baby. It's a big old spoon. The rumors are true what they say. You want to drink the spicy water. It's that, that sweet, creamy, refreshing yogurt. That sweet tamarind chutney with that tanginess, but I think he's making it with jaggery because it's got like this brown sugar molasses flavor coming through it. And then you get in that spicy water. Oh man, just that red pepper. 
and a little bit, there's just like a touch of acid in there somewhere as well. Oh, it's going for, let's go for a salty now. See, look how simple that is. I think it's just chickpeas and the actual little, what I'm gonna call a puri. It's good, but it's all about the sweet. You want that tamarind chutney with that spicy water. That is the one-two punch. One bite. Tamarind sauce is perfect. So the underrated thing is the actual shell that's so crunchy, the nutty flavor coming from the wheat. One, at least, why? We can pay water. At least, at least water. Yes. Okay, so we just made it to Cafe Serrage, and uh, I guess I haven't addressed this. We were walking around, and the police that uh, covered this district just wanted to take us around and like, make sure we had a good time, so they've been watching over us and like giving us rides to places, so shout out to the police. Let's uh, get some chai and finish this video off. This is the first thing I've seen where they're cooking that milk, and it's getting that cream rising to the top, and he's putting that into the tea, and so they just call that the malai chai. So for my last stop, I wanted to get a sweet treat. I really wanted to get the, uh, I think it was like a parata, like a butter parata, and the guy will sit here and bang it with his hands and chop it up with a chai, but they stopped doing that at 1 p.m. So he missed it. So we're gonna go ahead and get a special Malai uh, chai. And look at this, we got a big old family eating us now. We have the big old long table. Where'd these come from? <laughs> I don't know. They always want you to try, no matter how much food you've had. I love that fried onion. Pakistani boat. Pakistani boat. Oh A whole plate of sweets. But look at that. Look at that. Cooked down. Oh, Malai on top. We had this before. Yeah. Oh, we have this in Lahore. In Lahore. I, think, I thought I hadn't had this before, but I have, so. I actually don't think I like this top. <laughs> Tell me, it's the same thing. But this one's so much better than the one we had in Lahore. <laughs> <laughs> so you know the cups. You get more cups like this when you're in India. That's because this is a third generation shop. I think it's been around about 45 years, but the person's grandfather actually comes from Delhi, India and they brought that culture over and they haven't changed, so. I straight up don't even know where they got the sweets from, but this one, jelly filled, with a layer of chocolate on it. <laughs> no. Wow, that'll make you drink more chai right there. Drives your mouth out. So they do also rabri very well, which is a sweet in here. I do believe it's just like cooked down sweet condensed milk or cooked down milk. I'm actually not even 100% sure what rabri is. And it's actually not as sweet as I thought it was gonna be. Very milky, very creamy. Just a touch of sweetness. Hey, Texas man. Okay, y'all, we got a special guest. Does he want on? We got a special guest. We got the owner's kids. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. What's your name? 
What is it? Malik al Mustalik. Can you say Assalamu alaikum, everybody? Yeah, awesome. Good job, buddy. Ooh. Okay, so we made it back. They dropped us off. We're about to get a ride back to our apartment. Thank you so much to the police of this, this area for taking care of us. I've never felt not safe in Pakistan in my life, but they just want to make sure we smoothly got around everywhere. We were able to make the video. So just a big shout out and a thank you. Not only them, but everybody we met today did not pay for a single thing today. I paid for my transportation out here, pay for it back. That is it. So that total is going to be right around here somewhere. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep track throughout Pakistan. And the last video, I'll have a running total of how much money I did not pay in Pakistan. And then you will have to go to my Instagram, comment on the picture, and we will have some winners. So we're going to have a giveaway just due to the generosity and love from the people of Pakistan. Hope you enjoyed the first one. We got a lot more coming, a lot to travel. So I hope you're excited. This is Max, the Shining Walla, with Chris, the Balochi Gora, and we will catch you at the next one. Peace.